Hello everybody, quick new video here from Biocotic. Trek have released a new mountain bike and it's a pretty chunky burly mountain bike and it's not this one. What I thought we'd do is have a quick look through all the different categories of mountain bike you can buy from Trek because it's actually quite mind-boggling if you're fairly new to mountain biking as to what sort of mountain bike you need. There's an absolute plethora of mountain bikes for you to choose from. So I thought it'd be useful if we had a quick look through the different mountain bikes that Trek offer and then we can try and understand why we would actually buy the Trek Slash. Okay, so as you probably do know, mountain bikes come in various different guises and at one side of the spectrum you have the XC mountain bike and then we go all the way to the downhill mountain bike with a whole bunch in the middle. So I thought we'd start at the XC side of the spectrum just to start with. Okay, so this is the Pro Calibre 9.8 and the Super Calibre SLR 9.9. We can obviously see the Pro Calibre is a hardtail. It has the ISO speed decoupler to give you a bit of compliance. And then the Super Calibre SLR 9.9 has actually got some rear suspension. It's got 80 millimeters, 110 up front and 100 on the Pro Calibre. Now, I've added a new feature to Bicotic. If you're looking at mountain bikes, if you hit the forward slash key on your keyboard, in the desktop version, we can actually look at mountain bikes now on a slope of our choosing. And if you use the comma key and the full stop key, you can change the angle of the bike. And then we can fade back and forward the same as we could before. And it's going to give us an idea of how the bike's geometry is going to be affected when it's going up and down hill. So the fact that the Super Calibre is slightly longer and has got a bit of suspension, this is going to be easier to ride downhill than this one. OK, so let's load up the next bike in the spectrum, and that's going to be the Top Fuel. And I do get a bit confused with some of the Trek naming because this is the Top Fuel and it's an XC bike. So we'll compare that to the Super Calibre, but it's not to be confused with the Fuel XE, which is a trail bike. If somebody understands this naming better than me, then do leave a comment down below. OK, so let's point it downhill and then fade through to the Top Fuel. And you can see that the front wheel's getting pushed out and we've actually got 120 mils on the back and 130 mils on the front now. So it's basically a more burly bike, even though it's still an XC bike. And again, it's going to be slightly better to ride downhill. Both of these bikes have got dropper posts on to lower your weight. And at the end of the day, as the hill gets steeper, we really don't want our weight to go over the handlebars. So as you can see, the more burly the bike, the higher the handlebars get at the front. Because if you hit a rock or something on your front wheel, if your weight is over the front, you're going to go OTB over the bars. Uphill, this bike's probably going to take a bit more work. And the compromise with all of this is stopping your weight going over the front as you're going downhill. It's actually going to push your weight back as you're going uphill. And obviously, when you're going uphill, the last thing you want to do is go over the back. So it's all a bit of a compromise, really. So after the top fuel, we have the Fuel XE. Like I said before, that's a trail bike. And downhill, you can obviously see it's pushing you up at the front. We've got 150 mil at the front, 140 at the back. You can see it's a bit longer as well. So it's trying to be more stable going downhill. So it's pushing out the front wheel and it's pushing your hands up to try and stop you going over the handlebars. There you go. Obviously, again, going uphill, it's going to push you further off the back. Then there's quite an interesting bike in the lineup. And that's the Remedy, if I load that up. So this is the Fuel XE again. If I fade through to the Remedy, it's almost like we're fading through to a kid's bike because it's got Diddy 27.5 wheels on it. And this has got 160 on the front, 150 on the back. So burlier than the Fuel XE, but with the little wheels, the general premise is that the smaller wheels are more playful. One way of describing it, I guess. I used to actually own a Remedy when it had 26 inch wheels. That would probably look quite funny now. And then just before I show you the actual slash, which is why I made this video in the first place, so you're probably getting annoyed that I haven't got to it yet. I thought we could have a look at the full blown downhill bike, which is the Session. This is the Session 9 from Trek. And you can see here that your hands are pushed up much higher up. The bike's quite a bit longer. And this is in comparison to the Fuel XE, and it's basically just making you more stable on these descents. You can really see that there. It's like pushing out, trying to stop you going over the front, lifting you up. And because downhill bikes are not designed to pedal uphill, you don't get a dropper, and the seat is always down really low. And on a race run, I don't suppose you use the seat very often, do you? I've never actually ridden one of these. In fact, if we just compare downhill bike to the XC bike, so this is the full spectrum, look at the difference there. Downhill bike pushing out that front wheel. Stop you going over the handlebars. 
all going to be a bit more precarious on this pro caliber no dropper you need to be quite careful that you don't hit a bump and go flying over the front okay the moment you've all been waiting for here it is the new trek slash this is the 9.9 .9 xx access t-type and the t-type referring to the new way that the derailleur connects to the swing arm i think but as you can see this bike comes with a very funky high pivot design with all these pulleys and cogs and things to move the chain line i'm not 100 percent how all this works or what it does but i think it stops kickback or something maybe one of you could write in a comment down below exactly what all this does i've never ridden a bike like this pretty funky stuff not entirely sure how efficient that is when you come to pedaling up a hill or how much this bike is really designed for pedaling uphill not against the clock anyway now if we compare this to the old version of the trek slash just to see what the differences are there's the old version new version quite a big shake up you can see they've sort of opened out this angle here presumably to get some more gubbins in there seat tube angle is actually more upright and we've gone from 160 at the back to 170 at the back to match the front forks so just looking at it going downhill again in comparison to the old one it is that angle of the seat tube that is quite different again write in a comment down below if you know how that seat angle affects how the bike rides i'm not entirely sure almost feels like that would be more useful going uphill sort of stopping you falling off the back so much maybe so quite a radical shake up to the bike oh the other thing i completely just missed was we've now gone to a mullet 29 at the front 27.5 at the back whereas the old one was a 29er now i believe that you can change some bits and bobs in here and turn this into a 29er as well i think you have to buy these separately though and then you can also change head angle one degree either way by changing the bearing cups i think inside here so that's all pretty cool if you like tweaking your bike and one of my favorite things which i think all bikes should have now is one of these little cubby holes i think that's super useful and i'd like that on all my bikes so why would you buy the trek slash well if you're doing full downhill racing of course you're going to buy a downhill mountain bike the session here if you're a very keen xc racer you would probably get something like the super caliber and not the slash if you're just riding the trail centers in the uk which is kind of what i do if i'm totally honest then you're probably heading more for like the fuel xe 150 140 at the back that's plenty for everything that i do so the slash probably the bike for you if you're a hardcore enduro rider pretty much doing downhill on your enduro races but then you do have to pedal it up the hill this is where this bike will come into its own but for eleven thousand seven hundred and fifty pounds for this top end factory racing version of the slash that probably out of most people's budget there are various other versions in the range but the cheapest one you can get is this one this is the slash 8 gen 6 it's aluminium and it's a cool seven thousand five hundred pounds cheaper than the carbon version and only a kilogram heavier it's got the same high pivot design it's still 170 mil front and back and it still comes with the little cubby hole even though it's aluminium so that's great so probably a much more realistic buy what do you think let me know if you're planning to buy one of these bikes you can either add a comment here in bicotic which by the way is where i've made this video just come to bicotic.com you can look at all these mountain bikes and if you want to try the downhill uphill feature on your desktop it's the forward slash key and then the comma and the full stop to rotate it so you can see what it looks like so that's about it for this video if you liked it give it a thumbs up if you haven't already subscribe to the channel and go and check out bicotic.com